afternoon and welcome to Tamworth, the country music capital of Australia, today playing host to the New South Wales State League Basketball Grand Final Series. A magnificent season this year that's culminating in today and you're going to see it live from the Thunderdome here in Tamworth. It's the Shoalhaven Tigers up against Manly Warringah and let's run through the Shoalhaven Tigers lineup first of all. Starting in the backcourt, Damon Lowry, number 13, with Greg Seymour, 14. In the frontcourt, Darren Madge, David Buer and Shane Cox. The coaches, Warwick Cairn and Warwick. It's an interesting situation for you here, coming into a grand final against a team that you've not met before. No, I haven't met them. They were in the north all season, and uh, we unfortunately haven't had the chance of playing them. We get the chance today, so uh, we'll see how it goes. How much have you been able to scout them? I saw them uh, in last week's win over Tari, and I saw them in their semi-final performance against Wagga yesterday, so uh, I think the guys would be disappointed if we didn't win. It's been a great season for Shoalhaven. You've won uh, most games fairly comfortably. Yeah, I've been, uh, yeah, most times when it's been on the line, like yesterday's semi-final against Sydney City, excellent side. We won that one by 17, but uh, did it in style, and hopefully the guys can uh, pick themselves up, do it again today, and... Uh, the defensive tempo and the offence should take care of itself. Plenty of people in Nara tuned into this this afternoon. I hope so. Uh, all those people there are sitting in their living rooms. We've got a lot of supporters here too. We brought a bus up. So we're looking forward to repaying them. Good luck, Warwick. Thanks very much. Ken Cole will join me this afternoon. And Ken's right now with the uh, manly coach, Sean O'Connell. He's also got the starting lineup. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce the manly Warringah lineup. The starting lineup is number five, James Hewlett. Number seven, Craig Many. Number 11, Guy McGuffick. Number 12, Dan Ward. Number 14, Greg Ty. Coach of the team is Sean O'Connell. And I go back a long way with Sean. And I must say that it's uh, most unusual these days to see an All-Australian line-up out on the floor, which should win a lot of votes around the place, Sean. We made a policy decision early in the season, Ken, when a couple of Americans offered themselves that we go with our junior program. We've been satisfied with the progress we've made this year. Uh, making the semi-finals was our aim for our first year. Uh, we're here in the final. The guys aren't overconfident, but we feel very comfortable about the game. Well, where do you see this game being won as far as you guys are concerned? What do you have to do to win this basketball game? We have to be uh, fairly aggressive on the boards. I think, that, that I think this will be like the NBL game last night. Whoever wins the boards will win the game. Well, we wish you a lot of luck. I'm sure it is going to be a great game. And uh, we hope that the young kids come through for you. Thanks very much, Ken. So you've met the teams and you've met the coaches all in readiness here, just going through their preliminaries before the opening tip-off, and we'll have that in just a moment. But before we take you to that, let me tell you that at half-time, we're going to be showing you highlights of the women's grand final. So a great afternoon of basketball lined up here. Settle back, relax. We'll be back in a moment. And welcome back to the Thunderdome in Tamworth. The team's ready for the opening tip-off. It's the Shoalhaven Tigers in black and gold, mainly in the mainly white strip with maroon. As we welcome Mike Pauline uh, to the commentary position. Mike, uh, you've played in this league, playing with uh, Tamworth, so you know this game pretty well, huh? Yeah, things have gone real well. This first drive to the bucket comes from the Manly Warringah side, and there's been a foul on the opening play. Greg Ty will go to the free throw line. On the foul against the Shoalhaven Tigers, Darren Madge. And look at the matchups, Ken. Uh, there's a bit of a size differential here. Well, there is, and I think that was uh, an interesting start as far as Manly Ringer go, that they went inside straight away because I think they've got to try and take it to this team inside and put the big players, uh, the American boy, under some pressure and uh, establish some momentum for themselves inside. I've got a feeling they're going to be very physical in this game. So Ty makes two off the stripe to open the scoring in the 1989 State League Grand Final. And it's Damon Lowry handling the ball in the backcourt for the Tigers. Cox. Baseline drive from Shane Cox all the way to the hoop that doesn't go for him. The rebound pulled down by Dan Ward. And there will be a lot of run and gun in this game, I would think. Off the baseline, the shot comes from Craig Meddy. But there's been a call off the ball. And the foul has gone against David Buer. Underneath the hoop, Manly Warringah with a 2 nothing lead and almost losing it there in the backcourt is Craig Many. James Hewlett, who's had NBL experience with the old Sydney Supersonics, 
There's a solid little player, Phil uh, Hewlett, and I think it'll be an interesting, uh, an interesting battle with the guards out here. There's a lot of quickness on the floor. David Buer, the first time pass up to Cox, and all the way to the hoop to speak for the charge as Hewlett held his position on defense, and the charge goes against Shane Cox. So things not going the Tigers' way in the opening minute of the game. Very warm here in Tamworth today, as you can probably see by the spectators in the background, all uh, very much in t-shirts and shorts and thongs and there's going to be probably a little bit of a war of attrition for some of the players if they can play in this heat and viewer holding on defense there dan ward not able to get the shot up but the manly moringa rope in the offensive board and the little jump hook that goes down from dan ward it's four nothing manly he looks a solid player ward he's uh, very physical at the other end of the floor so there's uh a lot of body contact being laid. They're virtually running the little uh, little first option of the shuffle down there to get themselves open. Viewer hits the boards along with Darren Madge. And the Tigers come up with nothing at the moment. But they will have the ball from the front court. Worked the boards over pretty well. David Viewer, solid rebounder, but he's going to have a big job because he's got to battle these bigger manly players around the hoop this is Lowry Greg Seymour who can bomb away from three-point area not that time though it is Buer the second effort and David Buer opens the scoring for the Shellhaven Tigers nice move little left-handers are always uh, difficult to handle inside for some reason other players don't adjust and... Greg Manny just inside the three-point line court here at Tamworth looks pretty narrow so to get a shot away from outside that circle in the corner would be fairly difficult if your shoe size is over about 12. I think uh, Manny was the, the young man that was uh, the MVP in the league, Phil, so uh, he's an interesting player to watch. Well, he comes into the game with very good credentials. Damon Lowry hits for the Tigers to make the score of six points to four. And the Tigers rely so much on the American pair for a lot of their scoring, but working the ball over close to the hoop, Dan Ward has shown that he really can play on the inside. He certainly can. He's, he's strong. He's getting excellent position. If they keep the, uh, the ball coming into him there, he's going to be a handful for them to stop. Lowry to Buer again on the turnaround with that left-handed pull-up from on the paint. 8-6. Still Manly enjoying a two-point break. We've just been playing three minutes in the opening half for those people who have been used to watching the NBL this game is played in two 20 minute halves as opposed to the NBL's four 12 minute quarters I think Buer just got a fingertip on that to make a partial block and it's Greg Seymour to bring the ball up the court for the Tigers Lowry in the place of one on one and advances on the inside and scores oh. He's got some springs, Ken. He has. He's quick too, isn't he? He's quick off the mark on his first step. He looks under good control, and uh, once he does get in there, he just jumps over people. And stolen by Buer. Finding Lowry on the end of the pass, and Lowry, who's come into this game averaging 30 and a half points a game, has already got himself a fist ball. Which so I think the, uh, the danger for Manly is that they've got to be able to handle the pressure down the floor. Once they get it down here, they look pretty confident. Well, that one came from the three-point area. And it came from Ward, from uh, Dan Guy McGuffin. That's his first point of the ball game. And Lowry held up there by James Hewlett. Worked very much with the American duo. This is Lowry from three points. And the Tigers lead by 13 points to 11. They've got to get, uh, obviously, they've got to get right into that kid's face and relieve them. Almost turned over at half court, but Manly controls. Not a lot of half court basketball being played, but this time it's Manly who have to settle the ball down a little bit. Inside they go. Ward underneath again, and he's really working Darren Madge over on the inside. He'd be well advised to probably play in front. Well, he's got to stop the ball coming in that easily to them. The, uh, the two Manly ringer kids can just turn around and lay it up all, the, all day long at the moment. They're Seymour doing very well. tried to punch the ball inside. Away comes the Manly team with Guy McGuffin. Straight to the hoop for another two. Gives him five and a two-point lead to Manly. No sign of a timeout from either coach yet. We've been playing just over five minutes in the ball game. And the ball game being played at quite a pace. 
Muir. He's the high scorer for the Shoalhaven Tigers with eight. Lowry has seven, and that's their total of 15 points. Ward over Lowry this time, but not able to make the shot. And Seymour held up in the backcourt, but it's Cox off and running three on three basketball. Great pass to Shane Cox to Lowry. So both teams showing the ability to run, but the Tigers really starting to convert a couple of fast breaks to give them a two-point edge. I think Shoalhaven are only really, well not only, but they're damaging them more in the transition. It looks like when the Manly Ringer kids can slow them down just a little bit, uh, their aggression is taking over. But uh, the Shoalhaven Tigers certainly run. They get out there in the break and they look very tough. Well, Greg Ty goes out first sub of the ball game with Hunter Drynan coming in, very number 10 for Manly so still gives them a couple of big meaty guys in the post, the Guthick shot that doesn't go, Bauer the outlet pass that doesn't find Lowry, cut out well in the backcourt by Craig Meddy and McGuffick gets the shot away he's 3 of 3 and he's hit 7 points for the game yeah. 1 of 3 no problem handling it. He backed himself, and the judgment was good at 17 points apiece. So foul on the inside will send David Buer to the free throw line. One of the few fouls called in the first half has been paid at quite a pace. Neither team has worked the ball for any more than about 15 seconds. No, they're both... Uh, both teams are playing very well. The ball's moving well. The shooting's been very good it hasn't all been inside they've made good balance shots outside they're getting the ball down the floor very quickly and uh, be interesting to see uh, if they can keep up this sort of pace in in this sort of heat 1917 on a couple of successful free throws from david viewer and the tigers advance the defense up the court just a touch not a lot of pressure on in the backcourt and manley's able to break it up fairly easily many find hewlett off the free throw line doesn't go for him and it's Lowry who roves the pack for the rebound. In the corner, Cox. And Cox hits from outside. They're shooting a heck of a percentage here. There's hardly been uh, two or three shots missed by either team. Sean O'Connell for the first time out for Manly. The score, it's 21 to 17, although uh, the scoreboard says 31. I don't think it's quite advanced that far yet. Standing over there, mate. We had to overlap. The, uh, the, the Manly Warringah team are coming back into a little matchup zone a lot of the times there, and they're getting they're, they're very vulnerable in the corners when that happens, particularly when you've got a guard that can penetrate down the middle like this young man can. Uh, tends to he goes to the middle and draws, and they're throwing it off, and everybody that's taking the shot outside hit it. It's an unusual competition, isn't it, where the teams go through the whole year without having meet, met each other till you get to the grand final. Yes. It certainly makes for uh, makes for a very interesting grand final when you, you don't really know much about the other team at all. It's difficult to prepare. So, handling the ball in the backcourt, James Hewlett, he's got Lowry on him. Handles the ball fairly well, and they go in the low hole. who can't make it that time with Hunter Drynan. And Lowry called for an illegal dribble under some pressure in the backcourt from Craig Menny. So a turnover against the Tigers. They lead by 22 points to 17. Been playing seven minutes. Been a great start for them. There's plenty left in this Manly team. Three-point shot that doesn't go. And it's Darren Madge's rebound. The quick outlet up the court to Shane Cox. Cox to the hoop. The ball doesn't fall, but Shane Cox will go to the free throw line. Took quite a heavy knock. Of course, a, a local junior, Shane Cox. They have a couple of American players, but... All of the other players on the Tigers team have come from the Nara area. And Shane Cox has been a mainstay of this team. Although he won't be with them much longer, I think. Just graduated from the Goldman Police Academy. And is about to be posted to the Redfern area. Well, it should make uh, life as he knows it rather interesting. One of two off the line. 23 points to 17. And Hewlett. Put under some pressure in the backcourt. Although the pass to half court wasn't difficult to make. And the push to the hoop. Hunter Drynan's had a couple of attempts in there and come up with nothing. Pretty good defence at the back coming from people like David Buer and Darren Madge. Underneath, 
that little man, David Lowry. He has 11 to lead the Tiger scorers. They're running, uh, running Newcastle and Melbourne's little first option uh, off the screen there, and uh, unless the man sags rapidly, he'll eat him alive on that cut all night. Drive from McGuffin, nice handoff to find Drynan that time. That time Drynan making his first successful foray underneath the hoop. Still a six-point game, 25 points to 19. The Tigers in front. Cox, penetration. Oh, good drive. To the hole, but came up with nothing. And it's brought out of the backcourt by Craig Meddy. Fine pass to find that man on the move. Drynan again, so a couple of combinations between Many and Drynan have resulted in four straight points for Manly. He's had four layups so far. He missed the first two inside that he got, but he's certainly getting inside with no trouble at all. And that'll be a foul there by James Hewlett. Trying to stop that drive to the hoop from, or the give and go was met for Damon Lowry. Hewlett incurs the foul, and it'll be a Tigers ball out of bounds front court. Another substitution coming from the Manly lineup. They brought David Blumanis in, who's not got a lot of height, but he's got some bulk in the front court. And another change in the guards, Phil Webster in, wearing number four. So it's Webster and many in the backcourt for Manly. The long bomb comes at three for Shane Cox. Well, they're getting burnt each time they've switched to the zone. Uh, they're getting burnt down in the corner there. Their man-to-man -man seems to be holding up very well. Manly, underneath, working the board's over. So we've got a five-point ball game. And Greg Seymour, off the free throw line, can't hit. But Bai was going to give a second, or Bue was going to give him a second opportunity. Another three-point attempt from Cox. So two in a row. Gives him 10 points for the ball game and an eight point break for the Shoalhaven Tigers. No team has come within 11 points from them this year, but they haven't met Manly. Let's see what Manly have got to come back with. Tough shot underneath that doesn't go, but a big rebound from Drynan. Rejected by Buer. Again, it's Drynan against Buer, but he has to outlet it. And hands there for <laughs> Greg Seymour and still Manly has the ball. Oh, good pass. A reject from Buer. But finally, they had to score, didn't they? They did. They stayed with it well, they didn't they? They kept pushing it in and they persevered and they did well. So it's back to six. 31 points to 25 at the halfway mark of the first half. And Buer looking inside but goes short. This time to Brad Mulberhill who's just come in. So it gives the Tigers a couple of six, seven players in the front line. Not a lot of beef, but Mulverhill's got some, some height and some springs as well. This time they shoot from outside. And it's Buo who had the offensive rebounding, or the defensive rebounding position. Tigers ball back court. So both teams going to their benches was expect on this very hot afternoon in Tamworth. A very innovating day for the players. And Seymour, who can shoot from downtown, but not this time. Cox for three. He's hit two, and he hits three. 13 points for the ball game to Shane Cox to lead all scorers. He has them after 11 minutes of the first half. From just outside the free throw line. To Lumanis comes up with nothing but a second opportunity almost grabbed there by Lowry hard off the window I call it a window but it's a wooden backboard here pass is a great one from Greg Seymour Lowry couldn't do anything with it but the second opportunity was blocked and we've got a travel called against Greg Seymour we have substitution coming from Manly Warringah they're going to bring back Greg Ty and we've got a timeout called by coach Warwick Tan of the Shoalhaven Tigers. They lead 36-25. So it's been an interesting 11 minutes here. We've got to get more help and people have got to Mike, uh, 
the pace of the game so far. Has it surprised you at all? Uh, no, not really. Uh, mainly like to push it up and down the floor. They have all year. Uh, Shellhaven seems to be fast breaking as well. They send, keep sending two people once they secure the rebound flying down each sideline. So uh, both teams look like they like to run and they're doing it really, really, really well. Let's see if we can hear Warwick can here. Well, he's obviously fairly happy with the situation. It's a nice situation to be in, Ken, up 11 points after 11 minutes. Both teams are running, Phil, but the Shoalhaven team are ending up with a whole lot of more open fast breaks on the end of it. They seem the two kids are getting down well, and the first pass they make each time is a good one. I think that uh, the Manly Ringer players are forced to carry the ball a little further than they'd like to. Well, the shot there coming from Ty, they came up with nothing, but they Ty having difficulty getting a hold of that ball, heads the hoop with it, and was fouled on the way. So Greg Ty will line up at the free throw line. Substitutions coming from both teams. Darren Madge coming back in. Ian Osland will get his first taste of action. Brad Mulverhill going out for the Tigers along with Greg Seymour. Manley has taken out Phil Webster. And after a short break, James Hewlett comes in. But looking at the matchups before the game, looking at some of their records coming into the game mainly have five players who average in double figures the tigers have two yes it's still it the opening five of manly looked solid they were going inside comfortably the other kids are having a lot more trouble inside against the american player than uh, ward was at the start of the game well it's a 10 point game at 36 26 as shellhaven very much in charge at the moment viewer baseline drive and a pass off but it We'll call for a block. Fewer held his breath there at the moment. I think yeah. it might have been a charge, but a block was called against the man on the floor. Well, that time he seemed that he, he was there for quite a while, didn't he? I mean, he didn't look like he, uh, he had position that time. I think oh. the rule earlier, there was a, a foul called very early in the game right under the bucket, which is a rule that we've tried uh, in the NBL to get away from, that charging foul called on a player underneath the basket because he's not trying to play defence. And I... I think it would be a big help to players and referees if they could make that more standard. Well, that'll be a Tigers ball. Ian oslin has got a piece of the man getting the rebound there and was able to get the ball back for the Tigers, but that three-point miss from Shane Cox was his first in the last four attempts. Lowry, he hits for two, and the Tigers extend the lead to 12. 38-26, eight minutes out from half time. In a half that's been played at quite a pace. Hewlett, just outside the free throw line, gets a good roll. You can tell he's played here before, he's got a nice little roll on that rim. Yeah. James Hewlett, his first points of the ball game. Oslin, Lowry, two point shot, can't go. He shot a pretty handy percentage out here, that's one of his few misses. And Manley has to come back and play some half court basketball. No, there is a shot from the corner. The rebound belongs to Darren Madge. And suddenly those second and third attempts for the Manly Warringah just aren't coming off. No, their shot selection has gone also gone off just a little bit, hasn't it? They're forcing up some shots now. The key part of that play that uh, finished up with Darren Madge going to the free throw line is the Tigers spread the court well. Well, they're playing with a lot of control. Uh, uh, this boy uh, handling the ball, Lowry, is a very competent, smooth player. When he gets open, he's got a nice-looking shooting action. He, he penetrates well. And you get a, a player like that outside, he tends to make everybody else a little bit better. Well, a couple of players in the game were chosen in the All-Star 5 for the 1989 league last year. Damon Lowry was the Shoalhaven representative. And uh, we already mentioned Craig Many from Manly was named MVP and, of course, a member of the All-Star Five. So 40 points to 28. Thread the needle pass. And a travel call didn't go, but it was a super pass that came from Guy McGuffick that came to nothing. Really deserved more. And Seymour. But reaching round the back there, the foul will go against Greg Ty. And the Tigers will get another scoring opportunity. They've shot a great percentage, but that's been brought about by the way they've 
spread the four, played some good offence and got the good open shot. Not that time for Shane Cox and stolen by Lowry, but he got a foot on the end line as well. And Manley will have the ball in the backcourt. So we've got a substitution coming from the Manley bench with Craig Many returning. Out of the game goes Blumanis. So the Manly trump card comes in on the backcourt. Well, he's playing up front right now. Just remains to be seen whether he stays there. And the shot coming from James Hewlett. It's all Tigers on the board. Larry couldn't get away with it. Came off a Manly leg. And we got a charging foul. Darren Madge has drawn the charge. Had the good position. And the foul will be recorded against Greg Ty. That's his third personal well, foul. Got a little fight coming on down on the, on the floor here with uh, Lowry shaving up to about four different people. <laughs> oh, a little bit of feeling. There's plenty of heat here at the stadium. And a few players getting a little overheated. But three fouls on the big guy for Manly. Number 14, uh, Ken Greg Ty. Could hurt them. Yes, it certainly could. Uh, Although I like the look earlier of Ward, he did a lot of good stuff earlier, so maybe he can come back in and pick it up again. The game's getting fairly heated. There's, uh, there's a little bit of feeling creeping in out there with a uh, little guard. It's got a couple of bull terriers out there going at each other. Yeah, that one against Craig Many. And the foul's starting to be racked up here. In the one-on-one -on -one situation, the Manly have had uh, nine fouls called against them. The Tigers only four. So, of course, in the 20-minute game, after the seventh team foul, they go to the line for the one-on-one -on -one and a quick break. <laughs> of course, thought that guy came running off the bench. The American City was over having a drink. All of a sudden, he sprinted back on defense. <laughs> he certainly led them down the floor and brings it back to a 10-point game. 40 points to 30. Pass on the inside. Three seconds is the call from referee Don Sheerman. So the Tigers, a couple of turnovers, not getting shot opportunities the last couple of times down the floor. Chance here for Manley to sneak back into this. Not that they're all that far out of it. James Hewlett brings it back to eight points. Hewlett's pumped up uh, on Lowry, and he's starting to take it straight at Lowry, and that's probably a good way to go. It might take a little bit of his offensive concentration away. Cox in the corner. Along the baseline, oh, finding Shane... Uh, Darren Madge underneath. Tigers away again, and it was that man Manny who was quick down the floor, but they couldn't find him with the pass. And Greg Seymour to bring the ball out of the backcourt, but surrounded at the moment. Lowry, Bewer. And a foul against the man on the floor will put Bewer at the line to shoot one and one. And foul is Nichols second. Bewer will shoot one and one. And it's McGuffick who takes a seat on the bench. Just starting to think that the man on the free throw line, David Buer, has been kept a little quiet in the last few minutes. They've done a good job on him, I think. He's been fairly restricted with the amount of ball that he's getting inside, but uh, he's doing a very good job for them down here on the defensive board. Well, they've had a couple of trips to the line and the one-on-one -on -one situation has come up empty, but they do have a 10-point lead. And they have the ball in the backcourt through Seymour. So, a uh, critical time of the game for Manly Ringer, I think, here. If, uh, if they don't be careful, this team gets away another four or five points, they'll make it difficult. Well, Cox, unsuccessful from outside the circle, and a good drive. Drive that time coming from David Blumanis. Used his body particularly well and drew the foul out of the Shoalhaven player. It goes against Damon Lowry. That's his first personal foul. The Tigers in not any real foul trouble because they only have five team fouls against them. They've got a couple more to give before they get into the one and one situation. When you have a foul ratio like this going for you, you from a coaching point of view, you generally feel that you've got to get away from people because it has a way of balancing up as the game goes on. So. Well, Manly staying right there at the moment, just eight points behind. The Tigers had that 12-point lead. Three-point shot comes from Seymour. Can't make it. Tip from Buer doesn't go, and it's a manly ball. Chance to get a little closer oh, here. Beautiful run. James Hewlett at the end of the pass. All of a sudden, it's a six-point game. 
Manly are doing it with hustle. They're just doing it with straight out hustle. It's terrific. They've extended their defense a bit, putting some pressure on in the center court. And they've got a blocking foul and a foul call that could have gone either way. And that is Blumanis. So the crowd's starting to get into it a bit. So we'll take a break here with the score. The Shellhaven Tigers 42, Manly Warringah 36. Basketball action this afternoon, the final of the New South Wales State Basketball League. If you've just joined us, it's the Shoalhaven Tigers wearing black and gold. 42 over Manly Warringah 36 after the Tigers had a 12 point lead and we're four minutes out from half time. And finally, Shoalhaven capitalizes in the one on one situation. Damon Lowry at the strike. Second one's good off the free throw line. And Damon Lowry has 12. So it's back to an eight point game with Hewlett in the backcourt. Blumanis looking down low. Can't find Ward, but on the other side, he does find Ty. Rebounding effort there from David Buer. And it's Buer left to bring the ball up the floor. Great pass. Finding Lowry on the end of it. He was fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Little reverse situation there, Ken, with the big guy bringing it up and finding a little man underneath the basket. It sure was. It was a beautiful pass inside. Beautiful. I'm surprised that uh, Lowry's only got that many points because he really does seem to have contributed a lot more than that. Yes, well, he has 11. Well, they've done a pretty decent job on him, well, Phil, because he's got out on the fast break a few just times. Just a change to that count, mate. I'm just looking at the score. 15 he has. That's 16. Okay, that's... It's the man above him, Buer, who has 11. Yeah, well, that's a good half's work. 15, 16 points is a, a solid night. He averages half 30 and a half of the season. He's right on track. 46 points to 36 as the Tigers extended out again. And Billy Hilsinger in the game for the first time playing in the backcourt on James Hewlett. Hilsinger, the chunky guard, number seven. Hewlett gets the shot away but can't make it. And there's a foul underneath the hoop. And the foul is against the Manly offense. It goes against number 13, David Blumanis. Or is that 12? I have to see. I think it's against 12. It will be Dan Ward. So Ward's first personal foul has put Buer at the free throw line. They're the ones you like to see as a coach. You just like to see that as play on. Two guys going hard for a ball like that. Well, they haven't been made to pay a penalty for it yet anyhow. So. Well, a couple of uh, trips to the line for Buer, and he's struggled there each time. This is him on the baseline finding the open match. Return pass to Buer, and comes up with two. Good pass again. 48 to 36. So after looking like they started to falter a little, the Tigers extend that lead again. Looking for a state championship. Down low, Manly come. Again, they go on the inside to Ward, but nothing there for him. Blumanis, the feed on to find Craig Manny, but too much tall timber on the inside. One second left on the clock, and they used up the 30-second clock. The Tigers get the ball back in the backcourt. They'll have to bring it all the way back. Lowry was off and running. But we're just over two minutes and 15 seconds out from half time in a half that's belonged to the Tigers so far. Timeout's been called here at the Thunderdome by the Manly Warringah coach, Sean O'Connell, and he's got his problems at the moment. Yes, yeah, it's a good timeout, I think. I mean, they're, uh, even though, though it's this close to half time, he's got to find a way of stopping them getting any further away than this, or it's going to be too much to get back in the second half. Just running through the scorers for the Tigers. Lowry has 17, Buer has 12, Shane Fox has 13. For Manly, Hunter Drynan has come off the bench and hit eight. Seven points to Guy McGuffick and Hewlett and Ward have six. So after a bright opener, the Tigers have put the clamps on them in the latter part of this first half and stopped their inside game. Plenty of Shoalhaven Tigers supporters up here. They've come a long way to watch this and they're making plenty of noise. 
So, turnover and a score. Ooh. Wait for the referee signal. Yes, he counts the basket. So one and one at the other end. And that's right, the Tigers. It doesn't become a player control foul. The Tigers go to the other end to shoot one and one. So we will see Damon Lowry, the man who took the charge, get to shoot one and one. Ten point ball game, 48-38. And that was something Manly didn't need right there. No, they certainly didn't. They've had, uh, seems to have been a pretty heavy foul ratio against them in the first half. So if they can hang tough and get a few of those back in the second half, it could swing back the other way again. Yeah, 15 to 5, the foul count, which is rather lopsided. But it can happen that way when one team starts to dominate. Yep. Lowry got a hand on that. In fact, it's got all the ball. Seymour, Lowry on the return pass to Seymour. Great oh, block. Beautiful block. Dan Ward. Many. Got to make him pay on this play, though. The drive to the hoop doesn't come off for Blumanis, but it's still a manly ball. The Tigers finding the pass to the hoop a little more easily than manly at the moment. The outside shot that doesn't go. Madge's pass. Finds Lowry off and running. The foot race is easily won. And the Shoalhaven Tigers lead by 14, 52 to 38. A minute and a half remaining in the first half. Manly have got to find some way to put the ball in the hole right now. They're starting to struggle. And off the hands, the Tigers. As much as they've really started to dominate the score again, they've wound the defence up a notch as well. Looks like uh, the Tigers have really taken Manly out of their offensive pattern. They're really having trouble getting set up in anything right now. So Lowry with Buer can't make the return pass. Seymour at the point. Penetration. Easy pass to the hoop. Way too easy. 54 points to 38. Manly will want to try and make some inroads into this 16-point lead before the half-time. They get two back there, but there's only 30 seconds remaining till half-time. Let's see if the Tigers work it for one shot. The way they've been playing, they may not be able to do that. Lowry, three-point shot from Cox. It's good. Why bother to work for the last shot when he can shoot like that? 17-point game, 57 plays 40. Last throw of the dice in this half for Manly Warringah. They get the shot. It comes from Drynan. And we've got a foul on the play. Stops the clock with no time left. And it'll be one and one for the Tigers at the other end. 15 team fouls for Manly Warringah. At the other end, it'll be Darren Madge to shoot one and one. Guy McGuffin, Greg Ty have three fouls apiece for Manly Warringah. They're in enormous trouble here. Madge, who's been fairly quite scoring-wise, has done a pretty solid job on the boards. He has four points for the game. The scoring's been dominated by Damon Lowry with 21. Madge hits the second. The half time hooter, it's all over for the first period, and the Shoalhaven Tigers can will take a 19 point break into the first half. Can Manly come back? Uh, I don't think they can. I don't think that they've got enough offensive firepower to get back. They, uh, they're pushing the ball around well, Phil, and they're rotating well, but they, they're not penetrating. There's no real penetration, and there doesn't look to be anybody that's hot from the perimeter. They've got to get somebody that can put the ball in from outside. Well, the 19-point game here at the Thunderdome in Tamworth. We'll be back in a moment. In the 1989 State League Basketball Grand Final, it's the Shoalhaven Tigers and Manly Moringa. At the moment, as you can see from the score behind me, Shoalhaven Tigers enjoying a 19-point lead. Domination in the second half of that, the first half. First part of the game, well, it's very much even, Stephen, but the Tigers really showing their class and I guess two teams that haven't met each other before this season, feeling each other out, and the Tigers, well, dominate, as I say, in that first half. 
The second half's a different story. Coach Sean O'Connell will get a chance to talk to his players in the half-time break and start to, well, do some of the work that, uh, the scouting work that he wasn't able to do during the season because, as we mentioned during the commentary, that's the first time these two teams have come up against each other this year. So a few players to fill each other out. The game very much far from over. But earlier today, we also had the women's grand final. It was the Narrow Mind Jets and the Bankstown Bruins in a great game. And a play of the State Basketball League grand final from Tamworth. The Shoalhaven Tigers playing in black and gold. Manly Warringah in white and maroon. 59 points to 40 it is at half time. The Tigers enjoying that advantage. Kent, I've got to ask you the question. Can Manly come back? Well, I don't think they can uh, at the moment, purely because I haven't seen that they've got enough outside firepower. They need, I would say, their two little guards have got to get hot. And that means they've got to be able to make some from the corners. The Tigers in the 1-3-1 zone alignment at the moment to try and stop that inside game of Manly. And it's Buer who gets a, a hand on that one, but it's still Manly with the ball. And they had five seconds left on the shot clock, but they turned the ball over. Not a great start if they were going to make some inroads into this lead. But the other side of the penny is, will Shoalhaven sit on the lead? Darren Madge working the boards over, can't make the shot, so neither team able to score in the opening couple of salvos. And a block there from Buer. Handling the ball out of the backcourt as he does so well. Finding Greg Seymour on the end of the break. That makes it tough, doesn't it, when a guy that size brings the ball down the floor. They're pumped up too. It's, uh, it's interesting how fired up Shoalhaven have come out, so they know that the next five minutes, I think, can settle the ball game. And can't make the shot, and a little bit almost lazy there from Manly Goringa. Weren't able to drag that ball in. It was there to be had from McGuffick, but he just couldn't get a handle on it. Fewer losing at that time, but Lowry stays right with it. Pulls it up off the paint and scores. 63 points to 40 in what looks like a match-winning lead, although we're a long way from home. Two minutes into the second half. And the, and the Manly Warringa side starts to fire for three. Can't make it. Cox's rebound and <laughs> stolen on the outlet. But Shoalhaven get it back again. Lowry finding Seymour. Waits for him to play some five-on-five five as his teammates come up the court. A little slow coming up that time. Cox can't hit the three. And the rebound is grabbed by Greg Ty. So Manly, let's see what they've got left. In the hands of Buell, it goes on the inside. Can't make it. There's too much defense in there coming from Madge and Buell. They've taken away their inside game entirely, apart from that opening five minutes. Screen from Seymour to try and loosen up Lowry. Three-point shot from Seymour. Madge. Second effort, but he can't make it. So Manly, if they're going to make a run, I've got to start making it now. They sure do, and uh, I think they've, they've probably got to crank their defense up a little bit down the floor too to try and force a little bit of a change of momentum. The other team's dominating the whole game too easily at the moment. So Hewlett at the point. On the wing is Craig Many. Inside they go. That's been their bread and butter. And a foul is called. Darren Madge asking for a travel, but referee wasn't having any of it. It didn't look like he got mugged at that stage, didn't it? No, I think he did deserve the foul. It's, uh, you know, the kids are playing so hard. It's, it's very, very difficult for uh, a coach, Sean O'Connell, in this stage. They're, they're becoming a little frustrated. They know that the game's slipping away from them, so they tend to force a little bit harder than they should. And, it's, uh, it's a shame because they've played so hard in this game. I think they've just got to try and stay with it and steady down and don't try and get too many points back in a hurry. Just try and let it come back gradually and see if they can get it back to, uh, you know, 10 or 12 points with six minutes to play. They might still have a shot at them. Well, Manly makes the sub. They take Ty out and bring in Richard Nickel for the first time in the ball game. And Ty, after hitting a pair off the free throw line, he's playing with four fouls that he chalked up in the first half. So they won't be trying to rest him, but... They can't afford probably to have him there too long. Well, they can't afford that either as Lowry picks up the straps and dribbles off his own leg. Immediately, Manly try to counter punch, but they almost turn it over. 
Seymour got a foot on it. The referee said he did it deliberately, so we're going to have a reset shot clock and a manly ball. So James Hewlett trying to push the ball out of the backcourt. Now they have to settle down and play some five on five. That shot launched from the outside came up with nothing, but it's still a manly ball. Manly's still putting up a lot of three-pointers, trying to get it back in and in a hurry. They might want to settle down and just go with the basic offense for a while. In your experience watching them, Mike, have they got good outside shooters? Uh, mostly the guards are, but uh, some of the bigger guys are out forcing the outside shots. They should be more inside, but I think they're, they're looking to force the shot more now than just let it come naturally. Well, the Tigers in control at the moment. They don't have to do anything amazing at the moment. They just have to play some smart basketball. Right now, they're putting the ball through plenty of sets of hands. They found Seymour, but he hasn't had a hot hand at all today. He's the sort of player who can streak with about three or four straight, but we haven't seen it from him. On the inside, they go way too hard, and second shot doesn't go either. So that'll be a Tigers ball in the backcourt. Dan Ward had two great opportunities to score there and blew them both. A little over-exuberant. 21-point game, 63-42. And stolen in the backcourt by Manley. And away they go. Easy two-pointer and the breakaway. But block. And called goaltending. Referee Don Sheerman said Buer got that one after it reached the top of the dark. Buer probably liked that call anyhow just to show that he can get up that high. <laughs> well, here he is at the other end. And gets it up. Second shot. And Buer hits. So Buer has 15 points, Lowry has 23, 48 of Shellhaven 65. Those two in turn lead Manly, 44. Two point shot, it doesn't go. Madge with a rebound and a reach in foul that goes against Dan Ward. Well, so sometimes you just can't get it to drop, I mean that was a nice shot and uh they're just not getting the ball down. It's not that they're getting bad shots. They're just not getting the ball in the hole at the moment. They've just got to persevere and try and get some back here. Ward second only foul. They try and put some backcourt pressure on, but easily the Shellhaven guards handle it. Viewer. They've got a hand on that one. And the ball will stay with the Tigers. Coach Warwick Cairns done a pretty good job with this. He has them very puffed up. A little bit like you, Ken Cole. He's known as a motivational coach. Well, that's, uh, basketball is a very emotional game at times. And uh, a lot of times, all things being equal, I think sometimes the team that just comes out with a little more aggression, a little more fire, can take it away. Well, James Hewlett, they really want to score fairly quickly in each 30-second stanza right now. This time they get the shot off. Second chance, and they do get something this time, but they're going to need a whole lot more of that. And in turn, have to really work on their defense at the other end. Well, that's way too easy. Darren Madge to come up with a three-point play here. After the foul, will be called against Richard, Richard Nichols. It's going to be Darren Madge at the free-throw line to shoot the extra point. And that foul hasn't done him a whole lot of good. No. But, uh, Manly don't need that, do they? Uh, they? Can't afford to let them get away and get anything easily. So Madge at the free throw line will be subbed out. If he can hit it, it'll be Brad Mulverhill to come back in. Well, no, not on that one. They hadn't booked the sub early enough. And Mulverhill will wait his turn to come in. 1-3-1 one, one zone from the Tigers. Manly had difficulty penetrating, 46 points they've scored in 26 minutes of basketball. The Tigers working hard on defense, but not hard enough to stop James Hewlett on that play. 48 to 70. And a long, long way to come back. Larry in the backcourt with Hewlett up on him. In low they go to Madge again. He flings up a left-handed shot and in. So Madge starting to make his presence felt with 13 points. Oh, bad luck. Well, it was an ambitious play that just didn't come off. And Buer handling the ball out of the backcourt does that so well. 
Larry again on the end of the pass. And Buer, in fact, was a guard, Ken, in his early days at school. Well, he certainly handles the ball down the floor very well, doesn't he? And every time, I think the four times that he's come down the floor, he's opened up a layup for one of the players at the end of it every time. Well, he gets hold of an air ball that time, and Seymour's off and running. Pulls it up, double pump, and scores. Timeout called by Sean O'Connell of Manly Warringah. He's watching his team go right down at the moment. 28 points. The score here at Tamworth. The Shoalhaven Tigers 76, Manly Warringah 48. to go in the 1989 grand final and it would seem already that the result is known 76 to 48 are we going to see the same sort of blowout that we saw in the women where it was Bankstown over Narromine by close to 40 points we got a foul against the Tigers this time but it'll be Manly from the free throw line they'll need every opportunity and they're going to have to score some in a hurry. So the man at the free throw line for Manly is Hunter Drynan, who came off the bench and put in a pretty good effort in the first half to finish with 10 points for the half and, in fact, lead all Manly scorers. Yes, he did. He did a lot of damage inside. I really hope those boys can hang in here and, uh, and fight their way just a little bit back, more back into the game because they've done very well to get this far and... It'd be a shame if they get themselves blown out in the final game. Buer in the corner to Cox for two. And Cox hits. Shoalhaven are playing right now very, very well, aren't they? I mean, the, the shot selection is great. They're making the ones that they do get. Their defense is aggressive. Every player that's coming onto the court is contributing. They've played a terrific basketball game. You can't take one thing away from them. On the outside they go, backing it out the corner. Hewlett finds Drynan. Drynan can't hit that one. And skying on the boards there was Craig Many. But he got a piece of a Shoalhaven player on the way. Bit of an extra bump. And the foul will be called against the offensive rebounder. So a 28 point bulge in the game. Underneath to Brad Mulverhill for two off a feed for David Buer. There's no, uh, there's no value whatsoever for players if they're going to gamble down front with no security or at all at the back. I mean, it's no good putting pressure on in the back corner or in the front court to try and force some sort of damage if you're so vulnerable at the back that they just run by you and get a layup. There's got to, players have got to recognise what's going on at the back and give some cover. Another sub coming from the Manly bench. Out of the game goes Craig Many. Blumanis coming in. And I just wonder whether we're going to see a couple of the Shoalhaven subs, a couple of uh, regular bench warmers like Robert Walker, who hasn't been seen in the game, and the veteran David Cranston, who hasn't been used at all. So we've seen Billy Hilsinger for a couple of minutes in the first half, but with a 29-point lead as they have now, it would seem they'll be able to give the whole bench a run at the end of this game, and they've all worked so very hard for this state title. And it would seem they're going to take a piece in the action at the end of it. Cox, hard drive to the hoop. It's called on the defense. A little bit of a bump there that goes against Guy McGuffick. And it'll be a Tigers ball out of bounds as the foul starts to mount up against Manly again. That's four against them in the second half. The outside shot from Mulverhill doesn't go. Buer. And they settle things down at the back with Lowry. Now Lowry organising things from the point sends Seymour to the left wing this is Cox goes on the inside to Mulverhill Buer works the boards over on the other side and scores so the two lefties underneath doing a job he's played a very solid game hasn't he he doesn't do anything flashy just a uh, good solid worker and contributes to the team right through the game a very valuable player worked his way to 17 points this man Lowry has 25 and could add to them here all the way to the hole make that 27 33 point game at 84 51 and suddenly Manly has to just throw anything up there and hope Lowry again beats three men in the backcourt the pass that was meant for Cox and he got shoved into the end wall there 
substitutions coming from both teams. Ian Oslin's coming back in for the Tigers to take out Greg Seymour. Craig Menny comes back in with Greg Ty. Ty coming back with four fouls, but he's not going to do anything sitting on the bench. So Sean O'Connell, the coach, has to throw him back into the game. He was one of the few players that I've seen in a long time that makes that little bounce pass on the fast break and makes it very, very well. Not, not many players throw that bounce pass anymore. He showed a pretty fine pair of hands there, but couldn't make the shot. It's Lumanis straight down the middle, and suddenly the manly shots are going awfully astray. As panic is really starting to set in to the team from north of the harbour. Oslin finding Mulverhill down low had that shot partially blocked and Manly get another scoring opportunity but we're halfway through the second half Shellhaven with a 33 point lead 84 points to 51 and the Manly shots just not starting to drop the game is really deteriorating somewhat as they start to panic Lowry walking the ball up the floor against Craig Menny. Cox to Oslin. So Haven have stuck right with their offence. And Damon Lowry from the corner hits his 29th point. That's exactly what Manly don't have. Uh, a scorer like that that can just ignite them at the moment. They need a, they need a Lowry to come out there and, and light it up. They just don't have that uh, firepower, Phil. The foul will go against Shane Cox. Greg Ty will go to the free throw line to shoot two. And Manly will bring in Phil Webster from the bench. So on an enormously warm afternoon in Tamworth, I'm not sure whether the weather's been like this. Mike is uh, this characteristic for this time of the year, yeah, not being a Tamworth uh, boy. It usually gets hot here, and especially with the uh, tin roof and tin walls in this place, it really starts to heat up. Well. It certainly hasn't affected the Shoalhaven Tigers at all. Coming from around the Nara area, and there'll be plenty of people in Nara and Bobadiri and Berry, right down in Milton Aladulla, watching this this afternoon. They'd be pretty proud of this team. Lowry. They go low to Fewer, and it doesn't come off, but it's still a Tigers ball. Cox to inbound. Fewer trying to set up in the low post, but they go high to Lowry. Lowry underneath, but a hand in the way that comes from Hunter Drynan. So the Tigers in a pretty happy position at the moment. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Up it goes to Fewer. No need for them to panic at all. 37 points they stretch the lead to, 88 to 51. Baseline shot that doesn't go. Manley really struggling at the offensive end. And getting stung on defense as well. If uh, Shoalhaven have played a high class ball game here and they're continuing to do it. As a matter of fact, they're getting better. Lowry it's, can't make that shot. He nearly made the best shot of the game. <laughs> it's interesting uh, that a team with a 36 point break as they have now. They're, they haven't really gone away from their game all that much. They haven't changed it at all, and uh, they've kept momentum all of the way through too, haven't they? There's been, they haven't just been an up-and-down performance. I mean, they've been solid from the start of the game, and nothing's changed. Well, Manly Warringah really struggling to score there. They're going to get a chance now for the free throw line, but they had three or four good scoring opportunities underneath the basket that just didn't uh, drop for them. So they're going to have to earn these from the free throw line. They've gone through a bit of a dry spell. They haven't had a score in uh, several minutes now, so they really need to get some points on the board and try to get back into it. Makes this last, uh, well, eight minutes really tough to play because they've watched their season just fall apart right underneath them here. All the great memories they will have had of 1989 and knowing that they can't win this game and just forced into some panic basketball. And when things start to go wrong, they really go wrong. They'll play it out right to the end. And oh, oh, what a shot. Right, right. Now, that is a, a crazy shot because Dave Lumanis went in the air to take the shot, was hit on the shot, adjusted it, 
and then just hurled the ball at the basket at enormous pace and curled back through and he's going to go to the free throw line to make a three-point play time out here 88 points to 55 and it's very difficult for coaches in this situation ken i mean it's difficult for coach warwick can with the tigers but how to try and say to his team, you know, keep it going the way you are, perhaps, but what does Sean O'Connell say? Well, I think you, you say to your players, just to keep trying, get to your game plan and go back to it and uh, salvage what you can out of the ball game. You really want to try and finish the game off with some pride and just try and get some points back. Obviously, you're not going to win from here, but you certainly don't want to quit on it. You don't want the game just to continue to drift further and further away by throwing up anything. And uh, I remember actually early in the year when um, the Newcastle team played Sydney and we were nearly in that, that position, like getting blown out. We were 22, 23 down with about three to play and we just wanted to try and get 10 back. And uh, we got 21 back and a couple of people got very hot. So it's never over till it's over, but there's not enough firepower out there to get it back in bunches they've just got to try and whittle a few back here and there well they've got eight points eight uh, minutes to go at the moment and a 33 point deficit to make up which would say by the way the game's been played is certainly impossible for them but yes it's just a matter of setting those goals set a goal of getting back 10 then make it 20 and uh, we'll see how they go uh. Larry Cairn's done a great job with this team hasn't he I mean they're very organized they know what they're doing all of the way through they all play their role well. There doesn't seem to be any selfishness or any hit of selfishness in this team at all. Well, Lowry couldn't make that one go. And yes, he's certainly been the high scorer, but he hasn't uh, used a lot of the basketball to do it. And again, it's Manly to go to the free throw line as they put some pressure on the inside on the Tigers and something they haven't been able to do for most of the game. And it brings up the seventh team foul against the Shoalhaven Tigers whereas Manly have only incurred four in the second half. That was something that really plagued Manly as they picked up 15 first-half fouls. Yes, it does have a way of balancing itself, it seems, as games go on, but you've got to be able to be in touch with the team to be able to take advantage of it when it does come back. Well, nothing off the free throw line that time, but they might get some scraps here, and in fact they do from Dan Ward. He's and a solid player, isn't he, Ward? He sticks at his job all of the way through. He's a solid player. Just got a little bit of a query from the bench at the moment, holding up the game. It looks like we are going to be able to go on. So the referee takes up his position again, and it's 88 points to 56. Manly. Well, they certainly haven't dropped off the defence. They've been quite willing to come up the court and try and put pressure on the guards, but hasn't done them a whole lot of good. Seymour with the return pass to Lowry, and good hands there coming from the backcourt from uh, Blumanis and sets the fast break up. In fact, getting a little bit sloppy in the defence there from the Tigers at the moment as they're sending the uh, Manly Warringah side to the free throw line on a few occasions. This time it's going to be Craig Many to line up at the stripe. He was quick. He certainly got down there quick that time. They're the ones you've got to make though and convert to three-pointers. Manny's had a bit of a disappointing game. That's just his seventh point. He's been averaging 17.7 .7 points for the season, so he's quite a few below his average numbers. Yeah, they've done a good job on him, haven't they? And the man in front on the rebound was Big Brad Mulderhill, but with him was Dan Ward for Manly, so they're going to contest a jump ball to sort out just who is going to be awarded this rebound. And Ward will be uh, counted with it now. We also get an assist as the ball went there to Greg Ty and two points to Manly makes it 88 points to 61. So again, there's a hold up of the bench as they just try and sort a few things out on the call and referee Don Shearman over there. Coach Sean O'Connell's probably asking for four points a shot, I think is uh, <laughs> maybe they're confusing the bench over there. They need to find a way to get more quick points and I think he's probably trying to get a few more out of the score bench. Well, we're just sorting out I think exactly who the foul was on. Sorted out now so the game can get underway again. We've got seven minutes to play in the 89 grand final. You're watching it live from the Thunderdome in Tamworth across the Prime Television Network. And the championship that's brought together some of the very best country teams and some of the best city teams. You're watching city versus country right now with Manly up against Shoalhaven and it's country on top. It's the long bomb there from Greg Seymour not coming off. And there's a foul 
against the Manly defense underneath. And the foul, in fact, has been called against, I think, Greg Ty. And that is perhaps the last time we'll see Greg Ty in the ball game. He leaves with five fouls. So in the background, it's Ty who goes to the bench. And Ty sits with nine points in the ball game as we await his replacement. And uh, Coach Sean O'Connell using up his mandatory 60 seconds to being Hunter Drynan. Well, he's not used up the entire 60, but Hunter Drynan will come in off the bench. And no sign yet of a couple of uh, Shoalhaven Tigers, players number nine and ten on the bench. I mentioned David Cranston before, and Robert Walker. Oh, beautiful move. But Buer grabs his... Uh, 21st point of the ball game. Darren Madge's rebound at the other end. Buer finding Ian Osland hard up to the hole and scores. And the Tigers machine just keeps rolling on and on. That's 92 to 61. Inside Manly, they really had trouble with that shot right there. They got the ball inside well a couple of times, but haven't been able to convert. Buer finding Osland again, and the points will count. An intentional foul falls. Oswalds will go to the free throw line. The points will count on the intentional. And we're going to see a sub. Some of the players I was talking about. David Cranston coming into the game. Cranston, veteran in the Joel Hagen Tigers lineup, wearing number 11. It's Greg Seymour who sits. And as a result of the intentional foul, it's no lineup. Ian Osmond's at the free throw line, and the Tigers will get the ball back from half court. So we could have a five or a six point. No, we won't. He wasn't able to convert the three point play, but it will be a Tigers ball. So Cranston with his first touch. Madge, a long way from the hoop for him. They've been the big guys in the backcourt. The shot goes up, partially blocked, and the rebound was easy meet for Dan Ward. 94-61 with six minutes to go in the ball game. Inside again, Manly goes. And this time they're able to convert. Ward's had a solid game. He's been probably their best player. I think he's done well on the defensive board. And it seems every time he gets the ball inside, he's capable of just turning around and scoring. So but they haven't had a lot of scoring avenues available, have they? They haven't, and the post-up play from the little man, Damon Lowry, didn't come off that time. This time, again, inside, they find it. There seemed to be a bit of contact on that one. Dan Ward, uh, probably a little unfortunate not to get a trip to the free throw line. And to rub salt into the wound, the Tigers will have the ball in the backcourt. 94 to 63. With Cranston playing in the front court, left to Lowry to bring the ball up the floor. He's shown no sign of firing at all. Neither is this man. Buer, great pass to Darren Madge. Wasn't able to finish it off. And Buer wouldn't have been happy because he fed him with a super pass. Whoa, he seemed to have some extra steps in there. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't quite uh, legal. Madge got a hand on that. Had a shot there and didn't realise that Buer has one, can't make it. And a hand on that from Madge. The feed from Buer, and it's a manly ball. Buer's left on his back at the end of the floor. Sean O'Connell is left to ponder what might have been. And suddenly things getting awfully scrappy in this game. The drive to the hole coming from Hunter Drynan, and things getting awfully loose. Buer has great vision, doesn't he, on the passes. He, uh, he seems to pick out not just the, the open man, but the right open man each time. You know, there's a lot of players can throw the ball to somebody that's open, but they don't necessarily get it to the man that's open in the best position to score, and he does that nearly every time. He's got good vision and great hands. Manly not able to convert the second one off the free throw line through Hunter Drynan. Still a 30-point break, 94-64. The Tigers would be fairly happy to go home with that break. Buer can't add to it on that play. Neither can Darren Madge, but Buer again got hit. 
and makes it. So he's got a nice old whack in the jaw in two points. 96 to 64. Four minutes to go in the ball game. And underneath the basket, the foul, Dan Wood will go to the free throw line with the foul against the Tigers. Brad Mulverhill coming back. Shane Cox getting more minutes on the floor. Ian Osmond goes out along with David Buer. Buer will sit with 23 points. Lowry has 29. And Manly down by 32 points. Well, I think he's been their best player, the boy on the foul line. He's had a solid game all the way through. He's stayed at his task. That gives him 13 points for the ball game. Drynan has 14. <laughs> a turnover in the backcourt. One of the few mistakes that Lowry has made. 96-66. So still that 30-point break. And just under four minutes to go. And Hunter Drynan grabs his 16th point. Remember, he did come in off the bench. So yeah. he's, he's had a fine game. 11 and a half points per game average he brought into the game, so he's added to that. David Cranston fires up his first shot of the ball game and hits. And suddenly it's all going to open up on the inside, and I think that's testimony to the fact that Fewer is on the bench. Lowry to bring the bell back to Shoalhaven. The screen coming from Mulberhill. Lowry opened up all the way to the hoop. And they foul Cox over the back. Will he be allowed a pair of free throws? It's a question of whether he had control of the ball at the time, and the referee said he did. So Shane Cox goes to the free throw line, and a timeout called by coach Warwick Can of the Shoalhaven Tigers. His team up by 28 points, and I imagine at this stage, Ken, he's going to be saying to them, look, don't destroy the good work right here. That's right. It's, at this stage, it's just keep calm, uh, keep under control. You've played a terrific game. Don't do anything silly at the end of the game. Don't let any sort of false emotion start to take over now. Just finish the game off with some... Hi, Mum. ...way you've played it all the way through, which has been a pretty classy effort from them. Look out on the defensive board. Here's Sean O'Connell here. get the rebound, we've got to flap it out of bounds, right? So that we can set up again. Run again. Let's make sure that we keep run and run hard all the time. Pretty strongly, guys. Keep your heads up. All they can do at this stage, Mike, is, is finish as strongly as they can. Yeah, they're trying to make it respectable, I think, right now, because uh, they've got a lot of heart, so I think they'll uh, finish strong. I don't think you'll see anyone giving up out there on the Manly team. So they've got just over three minutes to play. 98 points to 70. Shane Cox at the free throw line. Cox, who has 15 points in the ball game, hit... Uh, Three straight three-pointers in the first half. Hasn't been seen a lot of in the second half and unsuccessful from the free throw line. Always amazes me that a good three-point shooter can miss so readily from the free throw line. But David Cranston is two of two from the field. He's been sitting on the bench the entire game. He comes out and hits both opportunities that have been presented in the second half. A long bomb that goes up doesn't come to anything and Cox has been bowled over again. That will put Cox, I think, at the free throw line if our foul count is right. We don't have a board that says... I thought that was the 8th team foul against Manly, and I think that's what the bench is saying right now. That is the 8th team foul, and Shane Cox will take the long walk to the other end of the free throw line to shoot one and one. 100 points to 70, Shoalhaven leads. Must have been the 5th foul on Ward, too, I'd say. Yes, he's uh, taken a seat. been uh, the big men in trouble well Cox misses again a little left handed hook that was thrown up by the Tigers Mulverhill didn't go but the Tigers back at the other end yeah. and quickly they advance of course Manly and they come up with points now it just falls out for a, a rebound to Shane Cox it deserved better didn't it it was a great steal deserved better 170 Lowry, who's played the entire game, bring the ball up the floor, just inside the three-point circle, can't hit it. And the big rebound, it comes from Hunter Drynan.
two down the middle. There's nothing going for them at the moment. A Lowry, great pass up to Darren Madge. Madge, who hadn't uh, had time to get back and join his defensive teammates, grabs two at the other end on a cherry picker play. 102 to 70. Madge got a hand on that, but it's still a manly ball. Under two minutes to play. And the pass that was meant up court for Lowry is easily run down at the back by James Hewlett. Inside they go, and still it doesn't go. Madge with a rebound. The man over the back with the foul was Hunter Drynan, and Madge will get the shoot too. Now we're going to see the substitutes come off the Shelhaven bench. Into the game comes Robert Walker for his first time in the game. Bill Hilsinger comes in as well. Damon Lowry is rewarded with a seat on the bench. Lowry sits with 29 points. Darren Madge at the free throw line. Madge, who had a couple of games also with the Sydney Supersonics a few years ago. 103 to 70. Big deep breath from the Shoalhaven Tiger and makes one of two. A minute and a half out from full time. The Tigers are a minute and a half away from the state title. Three point shot. It goes, and one of the few sources of joy for the Manly Warringah side in the second half. McGuffin, his fourth point of the ball game, 103 to 73. Brad Mulderhill handing off in the corner to Hilsinger. Hilsinger hits. So his first point for the ball game, trying to get everyone on the score sheet. They've got everyone there bar Walker. Manly Warringah can't make the shot, but they are going to go to the free throw line through Guy McGuffin. 105-73, and they're staying in the chance here at the Thunderdome in Tamworth. That's the Shalhaven Tigers band. You can see them in the background as Guy McGuffin lines up and hits the first one. The Tigers fans supporting their team. They've come all the way from Nara to see this. 105 to 75. 45 seconds left. Robert Walker, is he going to score? Yes, he is. So they've got them all on the score sheet. The bench is up ecstatic. 107 to 75. Three-point shot. <laughs> Suddenly, the Hewlett hit, and a pair of three-pointers go for Manly, whereas they haven't been able to hit any all of this half. 107 to 78. It's a steal, almost. Man, for the Tigers. Staying a little bit bunched up on offense as players who don't normally play out there. Mulderhill makes it a little jump hook from Brad Mulderhill. The space needle, they call him in, in Nara. And he's going to go to the line for a free throw as well. It's incredible how in, <laughs> it's just incredible how in sport everything can go right and everything can go wrong. It's, uh, Quite amazing, isn't it? Well, three-point play from Mulderhill, 111 to 78. Ten seconds to go. They'll be all over here in Tamworth. Three-point shot goes up from the corner. It's short, and it's all over. The celebration on the Shelhaven bench. Shane Fox, he's happy. The Manly Warringah players, all they can do is go up and congratulate their opponents. They've been well and truly beaten by 33 points by a very well-drilled Shoalhaven side. They certainly were. They played a great game. The big man, Buer, who had such a great game, Damon Lowry in the backcourt had 29 points. Buer had 23. Darren Madge finished with 16 after scoring eight in each half. Shane Cox added just two points in the second half to make a 15 point total after grabbing that 13 first half points to be the Tigers main contributors for Manly it was Drynan with 18 Ward with 13 McGuffick with 14 and Hewlett with 11 were the only double figure scorers so as we get ready for the presentation here 
at Tamworth. We'll take a break and be back in a moment. Eighty-nine State Basketball League. And with me, I've got the player of the match, Damon Larry. Tremendous game, Damon. Thanks a lot, Phil. Only thing I can say right now is I want to thank all the guys down at Ampole, all the guys at Bombard area and Beachwood Homes, and the Proctor family, Sasha, Steve, Honey, Chris, and Tim, and the Roberts family, Gwen, Warren, Jody, and Shelly, and Lee's Kivers, and, and all her family. And uh, we won the championship, that's all I can say. Damon, I hope you didn't miss anyone in there because there's going to be some people offended <laughs> in Nara and Bombardary if uh, you've missed out someone there. But uh, people probably wondering why I've got a bit of a smile on my face. I didn't reveal during the telecast, but I was a former Shoalhaven Tiger, so I'm fairly happy about this as well. Hey, we said that before the game, too. We said Phil's going to announce the game, so we got to win the championship for Phil. And we never won a title. I never won a title before. And I'm just so happy right now I could do 15 backflips and just land on my head right now. It wouldn't even hurt. I'm you're not happy. You're supposed to be tired. Tired? No. I'm hey, I told everybody at the beginning of the season, undefeated season and a championship, I've done it. All I can do now is go home and party. And Dean, my boy Dean in the posse. Well done, Damon. Thanks, Phil. Great game. Well, that's it here. Damon Lowry, a fairly excited fellow, let me tell you, and so are his teammates. We'll join them now in the presentation area as they make the presentations for the 1989 State League. Ladies, testing one, testing one, two. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from uh, the uh, discussion there with uh, Phil Lynch. And uh, we'll go straight into the presentation of trophies to the winning team. I would like to now call forward the captain of the uh, Shoalhaven Tigers, Ian Oslin. Ian Oslin. Ian Oslins to pre be presented the championship trophy and his winner's medallion. I would just like to get Ian to speak to you for a moment. I'm on camera? Yep. Oh, I'm on camera. Once again, I'd just like to thank, uh, follow up in Damon's words. Uh, I'd like to thank Beachwood Homes for supporting us this year. Uh, my personal sponsor, the boys from out at Park Hire. A couple of them are up here this weekend. Uh, we couldn't have done it without the whole team. And once again, it's great to go through a season undefeated. We, everyone in the Shoalhaven district should be uh, proud of this effort. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian. And now I'll call forward the players from the Shoalhaven Tigers. Shane Cox. Bill Hilsinger, Robert Walker, Bill Hilsinger, Darren Madge, Bradley Mulverhill, David Cranston, David Baiwa, Damon Lowry, Greg Seymour, the manageress of the team, Lynn Kennedy. And ladies and gentlemen, the coach of the team, Warwick Can. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Shalhaven Tigers, 1989 champions. certainly got a very happy coach with me too here, Warwick Ken. Warwick, uh, I guess when you started out this game, you'd never have thought you'd put such a gap in the score. Uh, Dean, no. You did it, Dean. <laughs> uh, well, we've been blowing teams away. I'm not surprised. We've got a good all-round game, a good full-court game, and uh, 
it just depends on what we produced on the day. We have produced similar play to that, and the guys were hyped up, ready to play. So, as much as I like to score, and I'm not terribly surprised because the play's been there. Ask me at the beginning of the season, and I would have known, but uh, I'm very happy with the team. What I was most impressed about Warwick, and even though the game was probably won a long way from home, everybody stuck to their task. Yeah, good discipline, good teamwork throughout. Uh, the year. Uh, there's a couple of older guys, but basically the guys are young. Um, the two Americans are only 21. They set a good example for the other guys. And, you know, like, yeah, good composure. I think that's been a hallmark of our side. And obviously the way they play is the way they behave. It's very good teamwork. And it's, uh, that's their trait. Obviously, you've got a couple of very good Americans there in uh, Damon Lowry and David Buer. Uh, how much of a help has it been to the other players around them having those classy guys with them this year? Oh, well, both those guys not only are fine individual players, but uh, they're very good team men. You know, David Buer, the, uh, the centre, does a hell of a lot of work, which doesn't get recognition, and uh, my heart goes out for him. He just boards so well. Goes full court, goes for the whole game, particularly with an injury today. Uh, Damon Lowry is just a personality, just works hard, and uh, we've been lucky enough to recruit two good guys. Well, we've had three good guys over the past three years, and uh, it makes a difference for the teamwork. It sets, sets the tone, and... Uh, they're obviously the, the flagships. You know, we're only a small country centre. We have to uh, import guys. Uh, all congratulations to Manly. You know, they didn't have any Americans in there and they played a good style. But uh, we have to do that. I'm very proud of the fact that there's eight uh, Shoalhaven juniors in that side apart from the two Americans and they've all played since under 14. So I think that's a big effort. This is a team, the basis of which you've had together for a few years now. You're going to keep it again together next year, pretty much the same? I don't know how long we can hold them together. Uh, there's a few older guys. We had five changes from last year's side. We lost three starters, so that just makes the undefeated season just that more remarkable. You know? What about plans to go perhaps up a league from here? Is that, is that a chance? Uh, it depends on the financial support. I'd like to thank the Featured Homes who have been very good to us. Ampol, we're very good to us. Just about everybody in Nara has been thanked here already this afternoon. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a financial consideration. I'm very hopeful the New South Wales Basketball Association State League will um, rationalise and become a lot stronger. I think that's our future rather than going into state. There are plans for a, a national uh, playoff series for state league champions. I think that's a good option. Yes, yeah, certainly would be great to see, but uh, it's a great showcase to have these blokes here playing live television this afternoon. This afternoon isn't it? certainly is. I thank, thank Prime for covering them. Excellent job. Well, I was hoping you're going to say something like that, Warwick. <laughs> you've always been that kind of diplomat. <laughs> it's certainly been a, a great afternoon here, and congratulations to you. Thanks very much, Phil. Uh, Tom Moore at the moment is in the presentation area, and I think he's got a further presentation to make. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call forward the two referees in the uh, 1989 Grand Final, Mr. Don Schumann and Mr. Steve Carey, to receive their championship medallions from the Chairman of the Championship Committee, Mr. John Davidson. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two remaining awards. The most valuable player in the final from the Shoalhaven Tigers, number 13, Damon Lowry. And the player adjudged, the defensive player of the final from the Shoalhaven Tigers again, number 12, David Bywa. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, the coach, the coach of the year for 1989, the Shoalhaven Tigers coach, Mr. Warwick Can. Well, the Shoalhaven Tigers haven't missed out on a thing this afternoon, have they? Coach of the Year, Defensive Player of the Game, and also the Most Valuable Player, and the 1989 State League title. Well, it's been a great afternoon of basketball here. Just repeating the earlier result, the Bankstown Lady Bruins wrapped up the State Women's League when they beat the Narromine Jets earlier here this afternoon, and the Shoalhaven Tigers winning the men's division. We certainly hope you've enjoyed our coverage.